Now let's go to the types of decisions in relevant costing. So the first one, we have the make or buy decisions. This is a management decision about whether an item should be made internally or brought from an outside supplier. So in here, you're going to decide whether using the idle capacity of your company, you're going to create the item or the good on your own or you're going to buy it from outside. For example, a watch company might use its idle capacity to produce its own watch bands or bracelet, or a company that manufactures cars might use its idle capacity to manufacture its own shock absorbers instead of buying them from an outside supplier. So when these opportunities arise, the manager or the accountant is often asked to compare the cost of manage manufacturing a part internally with the cost of purchasing it. So here we have an example for KLM company. So KLM company is purchasing 2,000 parts from outside suppliers for 170 a part. So their existing, um, existing policy here is they buy from a supplier the 2,000 parts for 170 each. Now they are contemplating what if they are going to manufacture that part using their own uh, capacity. So if the company will make the part internally, the following will be the costs in full. If we're going to sum it up, that would be 360,000. Since there are 2,000 parts that um, have to be made, so if you divide it by 2,000, the cost per unit would be 180 pesos. So that's already uh, the sum for both the uh, fixed and the variable cost. Now the question here is, should the company manufacture the parts or should they continue to buy them from outside supplier? So if the KLM manager simply compare the total costs of 360000 with the purchasing cost of 340000 obviously your choice here would be uh, buy it from outside because it's cheaper by 20,000. So by just looking at the figures here, 360,000 versus 340,000. But if you look closely at the individual cost components, you'll find that in the 360,000 total cost, there is a portion of fixed overhead, which would be considered as irrelevant in decision making because whether you're going to make the part or not this will still be incurred so in the decision to make you are not going to include the fixed overhead so therefore the consideration here would be the direct materials of 120,000 direct labor of 100,000, and your variable overhead of 60,000 for a total of 280,000. Now, you're going to compare the cost to manufacture or cost to make and cost to buy. So if you're going to make the part, it will cost you 280,000. But if you're going to buy the part, it will cost you 340,000. So in here, um, it is um, evident that the cost to make is a lot cheaper. So this is lower than the cost to buy. So therefore, the company is better off in making the product or making the part compared to buying it from outside because it will save them 60 However, we have to remember that before making the final decision, we have to consider both the quantitative and the qualitative factors. So the quantitative factor here would be the effect on the, 
the company's required production level. So this is only based on the 2000 part level. What if the company feels that the needed production level is different? So to guide management in making decisions, should the company uh, require the different production requirement that would be different from 2000 units originally used, an accountant can determine the point of difference cost volume. So this is the production level at which the cost of buying an item equals the cost of making it. So the, this formula would be useful in determining the point of difference cost volume how many at what at how many units would your total cost to make equal the total cost to buy so if we can recall the cost to buy is 170 per unit and the cost to make would be 140 this is or for the uh, variable uh, cost which includes the direct labor direct materials and the other variable overhead this 80,000 is your fixed overhead because this is actually the total cost in making the part so to determine the the number of items in which um, both options would yield the same cost then you have to take out the number of units here which is represented by x so if you're going to apply arithmetic here or the algebra rather so you would get okay so that that would be eighty thousand equals 170x minus 140x so this would be 30x equals eight thousand eighty thousand then you have x is equal to eighty thousand divided by 30 which is equivalent to 2667 so at the volume of 2667 the cost to make is equal to the cost to buy so if the production volume is below 2667 purchasing the part will be advisable because it is uh, the least costly alternative so for example uh, let's try a different amount so I, i'm sorry different unit so for example at 2000 so what would be your cost to make okay if you're going to make the product what would be the total cost so that is equals to 80,000 plus 140 times 2000 so this would be 80,000 okay let's just replace this x with c cost okay plus 280,000 So the total cost here would be 360000 That's the cost to make. How about the cost to buy at 2,000 units? So your cost to buy would be 170 times 2,000, which is 2,000 only. One seventy times two thousand. That's three hundred forty thousand. Okay, let's go back to the sentence. If the if the expected production volume is below two thousand six hundred sixty seven, purchasing the part would be advisable. Is this true in this case? As you can see, the cost to buy is cheaper. So this is correct. What if we do? Uh, the opposite greater than 2667 for example that's 3000 so if you're going to to make the product okay the cost is 80000 plus 140 times 3000 so this is times 3000 plus 80 this is 200000 
What if you're going to buy? Okay, that would be cost is 170 times 3,000. That's 510,000. Okay, let's check. Okay, sorry, sorry. 80, 140 times 3,000 plus 80. Okay, correction. This is 500,000. Okay, 500,000. So now, if you're going to compare the cost to buy and the cost to make, cost to make is cheaper. So let's go back to the sentence here. If the expected production is above... 2,667, making the part is less costly because we're able to maximize our fixed cost here. So the more items we produce, the more na maximize ang fixed cost. Then what if the capacity or excess capacity or even the existing capacity could be used for some alternative use? For example, your capacity or the space may be offered for rent or your idle facilities can be rented out for use diba? we will be earning from the rent or there would be avoid avoidable fixed costs if the parts will be purchased from the outside supplier so the na ay uh, fixed cost na pwedeng dili ma incur if in case we will buy instead of making the item or the part. So those earnings are considered as opportunity cost because uh, those are the opportunity for gone, the benefit for gone because of choosing the make alternative. Therefore, these opportunity for gone, benefits for gone for choosing the make alternative will be included in the relevant costs of the make alternative and these will be treated as opportunity costs. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons. Thank you for watching!